Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures, and it's Monday once more, which means it's time for some more of our weekly painting progress. Hopefully everybody had a nice Halloween. I know, well, I have no idea what I'm going to have because I'm doing this in the past and it's now the future when you're seeing this and I don't want to cause any kind of a time paradox. So I will not reveal how my Halloween was, but I will reveal the fact that I got stuff painted. Uh, I painted a bunch of cavalry and I now realize that I didn't paint any eyes. This is a one-page rules, Saurian lizard rider, cavalry dude, uh, for lack of a better word. And he's been sitting there on my table for quite some time, hoping to get relatively finished. I went very quick, very simple, and obviously a little too simple because we didn't put any eyes on them, but hopefully that's something we can get fixed. Uh, as the title says, I hate cavalry, and I, I should probably clarify, I love cavalry in games. They look cool, they're colorful, you get to put extra stuff on them. I just hate having to paint them. Uh, it takes me forever to get cavalry done, so I don't have a whole lot, but I am happy I got at least this one finished, which, funny enough, I actually do have quite a bit of lizard man cavalry done, come to think of it. I also painted up some more red versus blue Perry miniatures. I believe this is their mounted men at arms kit. Very boring, basic paint job. Uh, I didn't do a whole lot of detail up close because, well, they're just going to be generic dudes on the table, hopefully in bigger units with his blue counterpart here. And he doesn't have a sword. I should probably give him a sword. And I don't know if that color actually exists on a horse, but that's okay. They're painted, and I am going to go ahead and put some grass, static grass, on their bases. Just did not do that yet. Wanted to get them finished up and ready to go before I, myself, get ready to go and do Halloween-like things. And then the camera starts pulsating rapidly. What is going on? I have no idea what's going on with my camera lately. There's nothing shaking the table nothing moving the camera is just even I, i'm stabilizing it and it's still moving it's driving me nuts i have no idea maybe some of you tech people can help i don't think i've actually done a video on these guys yet and i've got a box sitting around here maybe i should finish that up we should do that yes we should all right another model that's been sitting around for some time waiting to get finished is this artel w chaplin uh, I didn't do the best job on his little scroll things, but yeah, I don't care. They're adequately done. I wonder if that red was supposed to be there. I'm going to assume it was. He has been a ongoing work in progress for quite some time, but he's at least finished now. I think I put him on a 32 millimeter base. I don't know what size the GW ones are. I could have gone bigger probably. But yeah, I wanted him finished. He's been sitting around on the table for some time. Funny enough, I actually have stuff that Sparkle Trap painted. I told him to hold on to it because I'm not going to see him until later this evening that I'm filming this the day before of, uh, on the 31st actually. And I just am not going to be able to get a hold of it. So hopefully he'll have a double dose of stuff himself. I have a bunch of models that are almost finished as well, but I just wanted to stop. I actually have to work on report cards. I have a couple more finish to finish and then get those turned in this week. But I guess in honor of Halloween, I painted up one of the... I don't even remember what they're called. This is from the ghostly vampire set of figures that Artisan Guild did some time ago. And unfortunately with the lighting being the way it is. Oh, there we go, it's a lot brighter now. Um, I try to have this, actually he's he's got like a gray tunic and purple pants and a green cape, but everything is just kind of blending into the darkness. I like this model, I like how his cape is so dynamically, you know, leaping out as he's dashing forward. Uh, Probably if it wasn't for the bat-like look of the helmet and the fact that he's, you know, perched on the gargoyle and the very ornate looking armor that a lot of people tend to associate with vampires and blood knights and whatnot, uh, it would make for a dashing hero type model. 
Speaking of heroes, here is one model that is not. This should look familiar to a lot of you if you've been watching Netflix. And I'm not going to start humming the music because my son will literally rush in the room and tell me to stop that. I know he can sense it. He's got like a sixth sense. Uh, funny thing, this figure. So these jumpsuits, this is from the Maker's Cult. The jumpsuits and arms and the heads actually were all separate parts that came with part of their Valor Core release. So you could actually swap all this stuff out if you wanted to do cannon fodder style models like uh, War Games Atlantic has. It still haven't shown up on U.S. shores yet, but I'm somewhat patiently awaiting them. Uh, they're all totally swappable. So something fun and interesting and topical. You can print out yourself. It's funny just how tiny they are compared to everything else. Speaking of tiny, uh, I went ahead and I've been playing around with some of Adeline Forge's Asgardian models. So, they've got more of a bear motif than a wolf, but I went ahead and painted them up in space wolf colors, but this is like their Terminator style armor. I really like it. I like big bulky armor, and I mean even with Artel stuff, and I'm pretty sure this guy is Primaris sized. You can see he is significantly larger. I don't think I have any GW Terminators, unfortunately. But yeah, that's that's kind of like the size I expect them to be. And man, oh man, do I want to see Atlan Forge do some Custodus models. I'd love to see their take on that. Or or Salamanders with a very dragony motif. That'd be pretty cool. So if you haven't had a chance to check Atlan Forge's stuff out, they're very modular. Um, you know, obviously there's certain parallels to other companies' figures you could totally use them for, but the thing I liked about them is they have a whole heck of a lot of options, and if you dig just the customizing, tweaking, and, you know, figuring out what kind of parts you want to use aspect of the hobby, uh, I definitely think there's a lot there to play with, and they've got some crazy loyalty rewards that they've put out uh, in terms of interesting looking dreadnoughts and stuff, so definitely take a look there. And last but not least this week, I finally tried to finish painting up one of the Warbread for the Wadroon in Conquest. And I just kept dorking around, playing with the bracelets and straps and strands of stuff all over him. I gotta admit, at first, these guys did not appeal to me. I got them, and... I don't know if I was necessarily disappointed with them, but I was just kind of bummed out that they weren't anywhere near as uh, flavorful as the Ugers from the Nords faction. Uh, these guys are a lot more basic, but they had a lot more you can do with them. Whereas I thought that the Warbred were just kind of like set in stone with their, their big pillars and whatnot. I know there's actually a couple of variations on the pillars and the heads. I just felt they were very samey, whereas I thought that all of my Ugers so far that I've built, and I've built like six of them at this point, none of them look the same, even remotely. But, you know, that's okay. This guy, he's really started to grow on me, though. Uh, he's big, obviously. Uh, quite detailed. Except for his feet. His feet were really kind of plain. And his toes almost seemed like an afterthought. I could not figure out what I wanted to do color-wise. Obviously, all my Wadroon are very green or grayish green. So I wanted to do a kind of lizard green with very dark armor plating, dermal plates or whatever they want to call them on him. And overall, I think I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the effect. Um, let me grab a regular, or somewhat regular Wadroon, just to give you guys a, a good size comparison here. They're nice models overall. I just, I feel like the Ugers outdid them in terms of versatility with the actual model kit. But that's not to say it's a bad one necessarily. So, a nice little haul. Um, hopefully, like I said, everybody has enjoyed their Halloween. I am absolutely looking forward to these next few coming weeks because finally, after months of school, 
we're going to get some days off. So I am eagerly looking forward to that and trying to get some stuff painted up. Hopefully all of you out there are getting your stuff painted too. And hopefully one of these days we will actually get the game in person again with the piles and piles of painted figures. I've been keeping track of all of these weekly painting progress videos that I filmed this year. And I know I missed a couple, but like I've kept all the thumbnail video, the thumbnails for the videos just to count up how many freaking models I painted over this year. And it's, it's kind of insane. I've already lost count and it's not like the year's even coming to a close yet. So kind of cool. Um, so as always, we will have those links down below. If you want to track down, print, paint, buy, build, ogle, any of this stuff yourself, we will absolutely wholeheartedly let you and enable you <laughs> in that regard. Um, and also we'll have a link down below if you want to check out our Patreon, where we always appreciate your support uh, and help us keep the obscurities coming. That is always greatly appreciated. And I will bid you all a fond farewell at this point because I can smell some good food cooking and I am hungry and it is time to wrap things up here. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamburlaine with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.